Hello, and welcome back to recitation. So today I want to practice doing, computing some integrals with you in polar coordinates. So we have uh, these, these three integrals set up here. And uh, the way the integrals are given to you, they're given to you in rectangular coordinates. So the first thing you need to do is to uh, re-express these in polar coordinates. And uh, so for the first one, part A, I want you to uh, completely compute the, uh, the integral. For part B and C, well, we have this function f, which we haven't specified yet. So the exercise is to set up the integral. And we, we won't actually um, compute it. We'll just set it up uh, completely. So rewrite it in ter terms of r and theta. So why don't you pause the video and uh, get started on that and check back with me, and we'll work it out together. Welcome back. Let's get started. So for, for all of these, when we're, when we're transferring from uh, rectangular to polar coordinates, the, uh, somehow the most difficult part is understanding what it is that we're, what region we're integrating over. And if we can understand that, then the rest of it is just a straightforward calculation. So in part A, let's try to think about what this region is that, that we're given. So, so we're given the region from x equals 1 to x equals 2. So let's draw those lines, x equals 1 and x equals 2. Okay, so that's how, uh, that's how uh, x varies in between this band. And now the y varies from 0 to the function x. So we'd better draw the line y equals x. Okay, so this is the line y equals x. And the region that we're after is in between this band and in between these two lines. So it's this uh, region right here. Okay, that's the region that, that's the region that we want. All right, so now that we have that, what we need to do uh, to express something in polar coordinates is we need to uh, sweep out uh, rays of constant angle and, uh, and, and then measure the radius along the rays. So let's see what I mean by that. So, so we can kind of see that if we're inside this region here, the smallest value that theta can be is just theta equals zero because you because right for instance right here is the point theta is a point at theta equals zero, and then theta runs all the way up, and this whole line here is where theta reaches its maximum, and that's at theta is pi over four. So this tells us that it's so this tells us that it's easiest to write the uh, theta uh, integral on the outside, and we're going to have theta running from 0 to pi over 4. OK, very good. Now, in order to get, in order to get the r ranges, uh, it's going to be a little bit more subtle. Because what we need to do is we need to fix some arbitrary theta in the middle here. So I'll just draw kind of a representative theta would be like uh, this one here. So there's a representative theta. And what we need to do is we need to we need to describe how r varies along this pink line here. So uh, that's that's the line that we really want. Okay. So in order to do that, uh, we just need to do some simple trigonometry now. So uh, so let's see. So r turns on at this line right here, at the line x equals one. That's where r turns on. So let's see what, um, what the value of r is at that line here. So the point is that we have, uh, so let me draw this triangle here. Uh, let me blow this triangle up. OK, so this is, this is our line x equals 1. And this is our triangle. Uh, this is this triangle here. We just put a magnifying glass on it. So we have this angle theta. And OK, if we look at, um, so this x value is 1 because we're, uh, because we're on the line x equals 1. So the, the, uh, the length of this leg is 1. And this is r that we're after. OK, so basic uh, trigonometry, we know that cos 
theta is equal to, um, so cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, is equal to 1 over r. Okay, so that tells us that r is equal to sec theta. Okay, so what that means is that this, uh, for any given theta, this pink band turns on at precisely r equals sec theta. And so that's what we need to write in the bottom here. Okay, now you can kind of see that uh, it turns off at r equals 2 sec theta. Because now instead of going over uh, length 1, we go over length 2. And so our integral becomes uh, integral from 0 to pi over 4, uh, r equals sec theta to 2 sec theta. Okay, and now we uh, need to re-express our original function in terms of r and theta. So our original function was, um, so let's go back over to the, uh, the um, formula here. So we have x squared plus y squared to the 3 halves. So x squared plus y squared to the 1 half, that's r. And so x squared plus y squared to the 3 halves, that's r cubed. So this is 1 over r cubed. So uh, this is 1 over r cubed in here. And as we know, dy dx becomes r dr d theta. OK, so this is, the, this is the integral that we need to compute. And now that we've done all the geometry, this is, uh, this is going to be a straightforward integral to compute. So let's do it together. So just rewrite it over here. So we have theta running from 0 to pi over 4, and r running from sec theta to 2 sec theta. And we have uh, 1 over r squared dr d theta. OK. So that equals, uh, so we have Taking the inside integral first, we get uh, negative 1 over r from 2 sec theta to sec theta. OK. And uh, now this is nice, because uh, sec theta, if we plug it in for 1 over r, it's just going to turn back into a cosine, right? So this is just the integral from theta equals 0 to pi over 4. Okay, because we have this minus sign here, we're going to get cos theta minus 1 over 2 sec theta becomes uh, 1 half cos theta. d theta. And this we can compute to be uh, the square root of 2 over Four. So this is uh, this is an elementary integral that we could compute, square root of two over four. Okay. So and and that's it. That's all there is to a. So notice that the the difficult part is is uh, is figuring out how the boundary curves of your original region re-express in the r and theta coordinates. So uh, let's see if we can get more practice with that on uh, on parts b and c. So in part b. Let me just recall, we're, we're taking the integral x equals 0 to 1, y equals x squared to x, f dy dx. So let's draw this region again. So uh, the bottom curve is y equals x squared. And the top curve is y equals x. And x runs from 0 to 1. So this is the region that we're after. OK. So once again, in this case, it's pretty easy to figure out the theta, uh, the, the range for theta. Because you see, this parabola here, as it approaches the origin, it becomes flat. So the, the theta, uh, as we get closer and closer to the origin, is 0. So, so the uh, initial, um, the initial bound for theta is 0. Uh, it doesn't matter that we have this curve here. It's still 0. And then the top bound, again, is pi over 4. OK? Now, for this curve, uh, y equals x squared, what we just have to do is we just have to use our uh, change of coordinates, our polar change of coordinates, and re-express this curve. So y equals x squared. 
Well, y is r sine theta. And x is r cos theta. So this is all together r squared uh, cos squared theta. OK? And now all we need to do is just solve uh, for r here. So we get r equals, so I can cancel that r with that one. And it looks to me like we get r equals tan theta sec secant theta by solving. OK. So, so that's the r value at each of these points along the curve. Uh, so that is going to be our top bound. So if we, draw, if we draw little segments of constant theta, they all start at r equals 0 because uh, we have this, this sharp point here at the origin. And, uh, and they all stop at this curve, r equals tan theta sec theta. All right, and uh, so now f, well, f uh, we're just going to leave put, and then finally we have r dr d theta. OK, so that's our answer to b. All right. Now, uh, C is going to be a little bit tricky. Uh, what, what's tricky about C is drawing the picture, but, uh, but we'll, we'll see what we can do about that. So let me just remind you, Y range, range from 0 to 2, and X ranges from 0 to the square root of 2Y minus Y squared. And then we have f dx dy. OK. So uh, well, the y bounds are pretty straightforward, 0 to 2. This, this function, when I first saw this, I didn't, uh, I didn't recognize this function right away. So let's see what we can make out of this curve. So, uh, so the curve, the, the, the sort of top curve for x is going to be x equals the square root of 2y minus y squared. And uh, w this, this looks like it wants to be the equation of a circle. Uh, so let's see if we can turn this into an equation of a circle. So if we square both sides of this equation, then we get x squared equals um, 2y minus y squared. And now this, uh, this over here, uh, 2y minus y squared, so, so if, we add this bo if we add this over to the other side, we have x squared plus y squared minus 2y equals 0. And now the thing that I notice about uh, this expression here is it really looks almost like the quantity y minus 1 squared. Yeah, if there was a plus 1 here, then, then that would be the case. So this is actually x squared plus y minus 1 squared, except the, the, the left-hand side is not quite equal to that. It's equal to that minus 1. So this equation is just equals 0. So this equation is just equivalent to that one. And that's good news, because this says that this is the equation, if I add this uh, 1 over to the other side. Let me go over here. We have x squared plus y minus 1 squared equals 1. And this, we know what this is. This is a circle with its, um, this is a circle which is centered not at the origin, but at the point uh, 0, comma 1 in the y uh, direction. So if we draw this, This is, um, this is the, well, this is the equation for the entire circle. But we only want the positive half because, uh, because we were told that x starts at 0 and goes up to this positive number. So we only want the positive half here. OK, so 
So this is the region that we're integrating. And now, now that we know this, we can, we can again figure out the values of theta and the values of r. So, um, so first of all, theta is going to range again from 0, because this, uh, this bottom curve, as it comes into the origin, it comes in flat. So uh, we have points of, of arbitrarily small angles. So theta is going to start at 0. And theta is going to go all the way up until pi over 2, because it's, uh, theta can be pointing straight up. Okay, And uh, now, now we have to think about these lines of constant, uh, constant angle. And we need to think about what, what r does on, in there. So we can see from the picture that r always starts at 0. And, so, and it stops at, at this curve. So we need to figure out what the r value is along this curve in terms of theta. So uh, what we want to do is use uh, the equation. So we had it over here. So x squared uh, plus y squared minus 2y equals 0. So that was, that was one of the equivalent equations that we got for our curve. And now this is nice because this here is just r squared, isn't it? So this is r squared. And uh, this is minus 2y. And y is r sine theta. OK. So we get r squared minus uh, 2r sine theta equals 0. Solving this for r we get that r is just 2 sine theta. Okay. So, that, so r equals 2 sine theta. That is the equation in r theta coordinates, which describes this semicircle here. And so altogether, we get uh, the range is from r equals 0 to r equals 2 sine theta. And uh, f just comes along for the ride, and we have r dr d theta. And I'll leave it at that. <laughs>